Hi, it's Amanda. Welcome to my channel. This video is inspired by a few comments I've received from people over the last few weeks that are mid-transition. I already have a transitioning tips video on my channel. It was one of my first few videos, so back when my content was a bit raw. Presentation aside, there were actually some really good tips in there, so I recommend you do take a look at it if you are interested. This video is going to be coming from a new perspective. I transitioned for 11 months and I have been natural for a bit over six months at this point. This video will cover four stages for a year-long transition. Months zero to three, three to six, six to nine, and then nine to offering three tips for each segment. So months zero to three, it was my norm to get a relaxer every eight weeks or so. So this is just a month beyond that. You're unlikely to see big changes at that time. You'll have your puffy roots that in the beginning I was very self-conscious about, but in terms of maintenance, you shouldn't notice too much of a difference because in the end, it's just your roots. Tip one, if you haven't done so already, I recommend at this time starting to remove sulfates and silicone and other ingredients that are not curly hair friendly. I'm offering a layperson approach from a fellow layperson, so you don't have to become a chemist to do this but I believe you should recognize most, if not all of the ingredients in your product. And if you don't, I would say maybe what? Two or three for me is the maximum that I would wanna to have to Google to find out if they are safe. I notice this on most products. I don't know if it's the same on all, but even like an avocado oil or a castor oil or a this or a that, they have different names, but in the ingredient list, you'll see that companies have put in parentheses what they're actually referring to. If you've been watching my videos, you'll know that I am big on ingredients, so that is why I'm suggesting this. But even if you're not, putting good in normally gets you good out. I feel like the price points for quality products can run pretty similar to price points for non-quality ingredients. So why pay $17 for a deep conditioner with silicones in it when you could pay $17 for a deep conditioner with parsley and kale in them? I suggest you start trying to give those baby roots of yours their best life because a year from now, <laughs> they are going to be all grown up and a voting member in your <clears throat> pretty much life. Tip number two is no heat. Don't try to match textures. Let your relaxed hair do what it wants to do and let your natural hair do what it wants to do. As long as what your natural hair wants to do is be smothered by a silk headband. Because the idea of using heat is solely in order to match textures, I suggest that you just stretch your new growth so it can more mimic relaxed hair. Zero to three months, there shouldn't be too much growth, so it shouldn't be difficult to match this with a good headband. And I recommend silk because I always recommend silk. Tip number three is at this point to start learning about natural hair and to change your mindset if that is necessary. Some people are transitioning not by choice, but out of necessity, be it chemical damage, pandemic when you can't go to the hairdresser, we're like six months into this now, so there are a lot of people six months into a transition at this point. And there could be other reasons. I transitioned out of fear of a second miscarriage. Not that relaxers cause miscarriages. I just wanted to take every safety precaution. Now is the time to gather that inspiration. So follow on YouTube or Instagram or whatever you want to follow people that are both transitioning and natural. You want to see people that are going through what you're going through and you want to see where the light is at the end of the tunnel. And you also want to take this time to see this as the new light. For me, again, it was not a choice. I'd always had relaxed hair. I had no intention of having natural hair. I didn't want natural hair. I didn't prefer the way that natural hair looked and I couldn't imagine how it would look on me. And I started my transition in January. I would say by March, April, I was really excited to have natural hair just because I had never really seen it because people in my personal life don't really have natural hair. I never saw it in the abundance that you see on YouTube. And it was just that lack of exposure that kept me not wanting it. But as soon as I inundated myself pretty much with what natural hair can look like, it started to get me really, really excited. And a year later, I like it so much that I now have a YouTube channel about it. One thing to note, if you've always been relaxed, you can't really know your curl pattern. It's not genetic, so you can't even look to a natural family member you don't know what your curl pattern and your hair type is going to be until you can test it out in the many ways that you can test out your hair characteristics. 
you know how much black women put into their hair. That is why it is a multi-billion dollar industry. We care about our hair and people care about the length and all of that. And that is why relaxers exist. And that is why so many people don't like to trim their hair. This is not an unsupported stereotype. Black women love their hair. So it is a big emotional change to see your hair completely different from how you've always seen it. I did this and it helped me a lot. I got a haircut within three months of my transition and that helped me get comfortable with having shorter hair. So because I carried out the last nine months of my transition with shorter hair, I was more used to it. I'm not going to sugarcoat this and say that because I had shoulder length relaxed hair, me having ear length natural hair <laughs> was easy, but it's more of a transition versus like a stark change. So basically start preparing yourself emotionally and intellectually and get a haircut if that suits you. Months three to six. Things may start getting gnarly at this point with this whole no heat thing. The headbands may also to a certain extent no longer be working depending on how you're styling your hair. Tip one, now is the time to start working with curly hairstyles. You want to naturally stretch your roots so my recommendation is braid outs with perm rods at the bottom. I found this really annoying because perm rods are an extra step, but I recommend braid outs because they provide you more stretch than what a twist. And also if you twist mostly relaxed hair, it's going to unravel a lot. The reason that twists work so well in natural hair is because the texture is more amenable to being wrapped around itself and creating enough friction that it holds if you twist a piece of silky hair it's just gonna untwist tip two because styling is likely to get a little bit more difficult around now i recommend investing in or you can probably find cheaper ones on etsy getting a couple satin lined caps they'll come in really handy for a failed style they can make you look really trendy with some terrible looking hair underneath if you work in a corporate environment or any other kind of environment where you can't wear a hat all day on a day where you have a failed hairstyle, I recommend you continue with the headbands and just style your hair in a low bun. I feel like a low bun offers the least amount of manipulation. This is just a feeling that I have, I guess because you're only manipulating the top half and you're kind of bringing it down where it naturally goes. Whereas if you're doing one in the middle, you're bringing these up, you're bringing these down, you're, bringing, you're pushing your hair in different directions. And for me, it's all about the low manipulation. Tip number three for three to six months post relaxer is to start prepping for your big chop by starting to get used to trimming your hair. It was in this part of my transition that I started trying to come up with a schedule for trimming my hair and I landed on every one to two months. You want to remove your relaxed ends and you want your natural ends to start having more of a defining role along your hair strand because washing your hair gets a little bit more tricky at this point. I was just trying to move toward the big chop and it helped me greatly because when I finally did, it was more of like a medium chop instead of it being like a big chop. I would say the last two months or so, I was actually trimming every week because I was just done with it. And I was so comfortable having been already trimming my hair for the last several months. Months six to nine, your natural hair is a relatively legitimate length by this point and definitely something you have to consider and coddle while you're washing your hair on a weekly basis. Washing your hair is definitely more difficult and if you rush, you're likely pulling out chunks of your relaxed hair, which you just ripped from the hair strand. You didn't cut off with a sharp set of shears, so you've probably created some damage at the end of your natural hair at that line of demarcation. Along those lines, tip one, is to use products with a lot of slip. I don't recommend product junking at this point. I do think that's something that's a little bit more useful or fun once you're natural, but definitely invest in some products that provide you a ton of slip. And to that point, because this isn't gonna be one of my tips, I recommend that you detangle before you start washing your hair, and then you wash your hair and twist to maintain that detangling. Because if you detangle your hair and then get in the shower, your kinky hair is gonna start kinking up on itself, your relaxed hair is not, and that whole thing is happening simultaneously on your head, and that ends up leading to tangles. So you're detangling as a pre-poo, you're detangling probably as a shampoo also, 
you're detangling as a deep conditioner and then you're detangling when you style. Just detangle once and twist and then you don't have to detangle again. Oh, and also wash your hair in small sections. Back to my tips. Along my product junkieing, I have come across some products that I would say have the most slip. So I would recommend as a shampoo, the Classy Hair Classy and Whipped Shampoo. For a shampoo, this has really great slip. I don't have my Camille Rose products with me right now, but the Camille Rose Algae Renew Deep Conditioning Mask has an insane amount of slip. And then when it comes to styling, I would go back to Classy Hair, Classy Hair, Classy Curl Definer. I use this several times. It is a three-in-one product. It provides slip for detangling, it provides moisture, and it also provides definition. Transitioning hair is difficult enough, so when you can cut corners and use a three or a four-in-one styler, I would definitely just recommend doing that. The Unicurl four-in-one styler is also a really good option. Tip two, and I've already mentioned this, when you're done with washing your hair, braid your hair. And you braid your hair for a braid out using perm rods at the end because again, your ends are not going to coil. This may not be the case for you, but I found that my hair did better in styles versus buns because it retained moisture a lot better. Not my relaxed hair. My relaxed hair was always moisturized, but my natural hair. And that's actually the case now too. Also, at a certain point, when you are doing buns and your relaxed hair is getting longer and longer, yes, a headband is great, but in order to get that sleek, uniform look, you have to pull harder to get that tension, to get it lassoed into a bun. Because again, no or minimal tension is the name of the game. Better to just put your hair in a curly style and just let it do what it wants to do. If you're putting it into a bun, you're pulling it, you're yanking it, you're putting in gels, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're trying to tame it and get it to look like relaxed hair. Your natural hair is not going to look like relaxed hair unless you pull it within an inch of its life or you use heat to flatten it out. So comply. You're gonna be switching over to it anyway, so just start now. Tip three, and this speaks pretty much to what I was just talking about. Your hair is very fragile, so leave it alone. You style once on your wash day and then you leave it alone for six days and then you wash it again on the seventh day. Find your holy grail products and stick to them. You want products that work really well in your hair because you want to be able to style once, live six. You don't want to have to retouch, re-moisturize, re-spritz, re-anything your hair throughout the week. You want to do it once and you want to retain moisture and definition for the next six days. And it's possible. I have gone from having dry, cry-inducing hair to just, I mean, look, it's... I think that's some caked product. If I use a product that is not moisturizing in my hair, my hair will still be dull and lifeless in the next couple of days. Months nine through 12. I plan to transfer for a year to a year and a half, maybe even two years, three years. I laugh at that now, but I couldn't take it anymore after 11 months and I big chopped at home. Months 9 and 10 were bearable. I figured out how to style my hair and I was in pretty good shape throughout the week just doing my braid outs on a weekly basis. My hair looked good. But come wash day, that was not good. I, oh my God, my eyes are tearing. I'm thinking about wash day when, my, when I was transitioning and I'm actually like, my eyes are welling up. I didn't realize <laughs> that's impactful. It sucked at that point, like natural hair down to here. And then I had relaxed hair, just like hanging in little strings, maybe down to like here. And it was just so unpleasant. You can be delicate, but then there's the level of delicacy that your hair actually requires. So as gentle as I would be, I would take like three minutes to very gently, very respectfully, part the hair. And then I pull away, and I'm pull coming away with like 15 strands of my relaxed hair. It took me so long to do my hair because I had to work in such small sections and it was, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Tip one, and this is a little bit of a recycled tip, is trim your hair regularly. As I mentioned, I was trimming my hair every single wash day, so every single week. 
I feel like at this point, with all of the frustration that comes with having to wash your hair, you'll be excited to, t I was excited to take out those scissors every single week. Tip two, and this is bringing yourself back to YouTube or wherever else you can find videos. Find the archival Big Chop videos from people with long, flourishing, healthy, natural hair. It doesn't have to be long, whatever your preference, but find those archives. See where they started and where they got, because again, that's more inspiration. Monkey see, monkey do. <clears throat> Sorry. Mature, level-headed, intelligent woman or man see. Mature, level-headed, intelligent woman or man do. The last tip, and I recognize that this is only going to suit certain personalities, it definitely suited mine. When you are approaching that 12-year mark, and in my scenario, your big chop day, set a date. I set my date on Tuesday for the following Thursday. I put it on my calendar, I told my husband, and that was it. After all of those terrible wash days that you have been enduring as you transitioned, this should be something you can look forward to. There are a boatload of transitioning tips that I could give, but I wanted to keep this video relatively structured. I would love to continue to give advice and to just have an open dialogue in the comments section. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing, like, share, and comment below with any feedback, and I will talk to you in my next one. Thanks, and have a good one.